welcome to another episode of Both Sides Now, where we get some great women telling great stories behind great songs. And on the sofa today, all the way from Don Patrick, we've got the very lovely Bridget Dunn. <laughs> Bridget, you're very welcome to Redbox. Thanks very much, and it's really lovely to be here. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you came because I'm glad now that people are finding the spark and the creativity. And we talked earlier about confidence just to put the slap on and get out and, and let's start doing it all over again. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's like coming home again, isn't really, it? isn't it? Especially. How did you find the, the two years in confinement? Yeah, it was it was tough at the start and then um, and then you just find your own way and I think a lot of people were the same. You just find what you needed to do yeah. to keep up your creativity. I was finding that I just the writing left me, which came as a surprise because I thought it would last. I have lots of time yes. to write and I would sit down and, and, and give myself all this lovely space and it was lovely weather and it was, but I just couldn't really connect with the writing. Yeah. So I, I think when, when it first happened, I was very affected by people being completely confined and I thought, what, what can you do to help from a music point of sure. view? And the first thing that came to my mind, like for so many others, was just how can I provide some music and some help for people? So I did this little um, sort of live from the kitchen. Oh, I see. And I mean, really, I hadn't been used to doing lives at all. I think like so many musicians, mm -hmm. we avoided it, you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you were kind of forced into a situation where you did it. Mm -hmm. And the connection I find with people was remarkable. I'm very surprised because a lot of people who came in to, and told me they were doing these live streams themselves actually find that quite isolating because they weren't having the interaction with the audience. They weren't getting the feedback. They weren't getting that lovely fusion that you get. Um, so, so many people actually have said completely the opposite. Hi, interesting then that you yeah. did find a connection with your Yeah, your not book. only that, but I, f I formed a kind of a community within it. Did so you? what I couldn't get over was that people were tuning in. I did it every Thursday night at the same time, really just a few songs, sure. 20 minutes, kept it very short. Right. And um, just the same people were tuning in every week. Oh, and lovely. So many people said it, it was something that they really looked forward to every week. Mm. And it was a bit, it was a, I mean, I'm sure you maybe heard of the cocoons that yeah, happened on a yeah, Saturday yeah. night. Matt. And I was part of that too with Matt and Cormac, but, um, which was great. But I know that happened there as well. There was a fabulous community formed and people looked forward to it. They got their gin and tonic out Spotify, or their little glass of wine, their Doritos. beer or their cup of tea or whatever it was. And that's what happened with my gigs. And what what's happened in the since is I've met people out in Marks and Spencers and places and they've gone, that that that's something I really look forward to. So you've got week. your wee e crowd, your wee e fan base. How fantastic! It was good then, yeah. but I mean, I, I definitely it was a bummer at the end of it because yeah. you just wanted somebody to have a have a chat with you. Wanted to go and chat to the audience, and you were left in your kitchen by yourself, I looking know. at the dog, you singing know? to yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, going, I know. Where's the buzz? Where's the buzz? Know, you know? Thank God, it's so over. So it was like... very hard. Yeah. And the first time I was out gigging, I mean, it was the most amazing experience again yeah. to connect with an audience. It's just a whole other thing, and I know people have been saying this all along, but there was there was just magic in the room, as much coming from us on stage, but it's just that shared, shared, space, shared space that you cannot get in any other form. Because You're so right, Bridget. I mean, we created this place. There's four, five, six musicians in here, and this space was uh, exactly the same thing, where we come in and we share our creativity. And I think creativity breeds creativity. Because you were talking earlier there about, you know, um, not maybe find the inspirations for songs, even though mm -hmm. you had this time. Quite possible. Well, for a start, I don't think a lot of people understand. You have to have the right energy to start creating and start creating music. Very much um, so. But you also have to have the right people around you. It's hugely important. I, I agree. I agree because a lot of the times I would write immediately after gigs. Oh, totally. So or, you're on that. You're on that buzz. You're yeah, on that creative high. Yeah. Or going to gigs. A lot of the time, a lot of my songs came out of after I'd been to a gig. You know, and mm -hmm. I just Spared. the 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 music was in my head, and I would be going home. God, I hope that isn't that person's song. <laughs> you know, have and you ever done home. that? Uh, yeah, I always think, oh, th that must be their song, and then you play it to everybody, and they go, no, I've never heard that before. Yeah, you know, you know I've been in so, situations where you know you're like, I've got this great song, you know, and writing away at it, particularly commission songs. I want to talk to you about commission songs later, and you write it away, and then somewhere in he goes. That sounds familiar to me. Yes. <laughs> and then you play a song from about 25 years ago. Yes. And that's it's it. that Father Ted lovely horse thing, you know, and you've gone, someone else has actually written this song. <laughs> but know. here, anyway, Cormac's going to kill me. So we're going to see you in action here. So tell us a wee bit about um, this beautiful video. I mean, where was it shot? Yes, that was 
Oh, that was in Port of Ferry, yes, um, in a beautiful place called the Narrows, um, which actually uh, we had the christening of our, of our children there. So it was really beautiful to return to it's it. It's gorgeous. Um, and a friend of mine let me use her space. Uh, they were running at the time. So it was a place that was very, very dear to my heart because it's right on the shores of Strangford. Right. So you're literally looking on Strangford. Could you get better light than that? It's incredible. It's it? a beautiful room and anyway, you know, that room. And I spent a lot of time doing gigs in that room, having parties in so that room. So you're nice and familiar with the space. Yeah. And that's your first album, is it? Or that's, that's your album that you've had out just previously before this one coming? Yes, yes, that's actually the, that would be the third album I've yes. made. But right. uh, Touchstone from Touchstone, and that's Turn and Face the Sun, fantastic. which um, has been used by the government for a campaign for climate change has this it? year. Yeah. Very good, well done. So uh, it's really nice to see it be used for that's that. That's brilliant. So we're going to talk about, your, I know you have another album there on the um, on the sofa for me, so we'll talk about that after. Now I deliberately n not asked you to tell me about this song that you're going to sing today, because I want to be as educated and, and enthralled as the folks at home will be. So. Bridget, what is your song today and what's your story? Oh, uh, it's called Window Seat. And, Window Seat. Um, yeah, and I wrote it um, in response to, um, I, I, decided, I thought it would be a lovely idea to write songs. I, I really love old buildings. And initially I was thinking about the buildings of Belfast. Right. And I thought, wouldn't it be a lovely idea to write some songs that capture the beauty of some of these buildings that we are losing yes. rapidly? Um, <coughs> I was very concerned about that. And one of the first buildings that I've loved all my life is the beautiful Art Deco Bank on the corner of oh, Royal I Avenue. Oh, I have looked at that building. So it is uh, yeah. so gorgeous. It's funny how so many people connect with it, but I've looked at it all my life. My father was a lover of buildings and he would point it out to me. And I thought, right, I'm going to write a song about that. And then I went to the Ulster Architectural Heritage Society because I wanted to collaborate with someone who had the knowledge of buildings, you know. Even though I worked all my life in heritage, you know, I sure. didn't specialise in buildings, it's more in nature conservation. Well, you know, I do. Is that right? I'm a project manager, I'm a builder before all of this. Oh, is that right? Yes, yeah, so I built the, well, as part of the team that did Waterfront Hall on the Odyssey. Oh my goodness, and I, yeah, I didn't yeah, yeah. know that. So this is really interesting. Yes. Really. Sorry, I interrupted oh, you. That, that's amazing. Sorry, well, yeah, oh, that's so I'm, I'm, hear that. I'm dead keen to hear this. Okay, so... So I went to them and they said, well, funny enough, we've got this fabulous thing called the Heritage Angel Awards coming up and we're looking for some music for it. Yes. And then we went, oh, ping, this could be bespoke music about songs. So they basically, I said, I want to bring in some other songwriters and I worked with the likes of Duke Special and Anthony Toner and Gareth and Lovely. Love to create a suite of songs about Belfast buildings. And then because the event was such a huge success, it was sold out in the Grand Opera House. We, uh, they asked me to do it again for the next uh, city they were doing it in, which is Derry, and then we went on to Armagh after that. Okay. And so this song uh, was written about Austin's department store in Derry, which I think don't is I don't such, know that one now, so. it's a stunning building. Right. And it's very much a very glamorous building, you know, it's very, very, has its space in Derry, which is quite separate from anything else. It's very uh, quirky architecturally. And I thought I might write about the architecture itself. But I was, you know, sometimes when you're writing songs about um, buildings, you start by doing all the research. You find out, just like I did with Armagh Jail, you find out all the information and the to give stories them behind it, yes. And then um, I was thinking about all the different stories that people have told me. And some people told me the story about a, the lift. In fact, nearly everyone I spoke to in Derry had had an experience about going there at Christmas with their granny or their aunt or whatever. Is it that type of, are you being served, that old grantor <laughs> that, you know, do you yes. remember we had Robinson's and what do you call it? Down Robinson Cleavers. So is it that type of store? Very much so, I even see. though more quirky. All right. Robinson Cleavers was quite grand. Austin's had a lot of quirky traits to them. One of one of them being its stairs, which a lot of people talk about, which slightly slope. And everybody talked about running, sort of you fall sure. over when you're going up the stairs. But the other thing that fascinated me was the lift in it, which got stuck between the floors. <laughs> and there was a very formidable little lady who operated it. And she used to say to everybody, OK, on the count of three, one, two, three, jump. Ah! And everybody had to jump. <laughs> and that took, meant the lift took off Give again. A bit you of know? Momentum, yeah. and, um, but it was only when I started to speak to Westy, Wendy Austin. Who's, oh, the presenter. Um, Wendy Austin, from that, whose voice we know so well. Yes. Her um, granny, her grandmother, uh, was, uh, was th that was her family, the Austins. And um, there's a fabulous story about her grandmother um, who was called Molly Campbell and she was a milliner. Right. 
and she studied her whole trade um, down in Cavan and she came up to Derry to get a job. But when she went down to Chris home for Christmas one year, she came back up, she got stuck in the snow and she came back up a day late and they sacked her. So she was sitting in a tea room a bit forlorn and wondering what to do with her life. Yes. When a friend came in and said, you know, they're hiring in Austin's. So she went there and she got a job and there were three brothers and two of the brothers had an ocean of her. So no they went, way. Yeah, so they were at a dance once um, at the Guild Hall actually and uh, the older brother filled her dance card for the night. And when the younger brother, Glover, came up and asked her for a dance, she said, oh, my card is full. And he went up to the band and paid them to play one extra song no at the end of the night. Way. And they danced and they met and they married. The younger brother? Then? Yes, From the Glover. Song dance? Yeah, so she what married. A wonderful story. She married into the family, and she <clears throat> became this fabulous milliner that everyone craved her beautiful works of art. Um, she used to go to Paris and look at all the designs, and then come home, get all of these materials from sure. um, market towns, and make her own creations. And they used to be queued around the diamond How for fantastic. her designs because in those days your hat was your personality, right. you know. Mm -hmm. And when Wendy told me that story, I just went. That's it. That's it. Lights out. And uh, so somebody had told me the lift, somebody had told me, and then everybody talked about the window seat at the top where you got these views of the whole of Derry, you know, basically. And so I just wove all the different elements and into this song. And I think um, the thing that really came to me was that whole concept of the lift getting stuck between floors. <laughs> because As um, in life. <laughs> I just thought that's so like what it's like to be COVID? an artist. Yeah, I, and COVID has happened yes, since. Yes, you're absolutely right. But to me, being an artist, I think you take these great <laughs> leaps and you're so delighted with how everything's going and you think, I've got this. And the next thing, you're stuck again. Well, I'm speaking from personal experience. No, no. Everyone comes in and tells us the same story. There's a commonality between creative people with their, when the ups are ups and the downs are downs and this constant self-doubt, this constant... Is this good enough? Am I good enough? It's you know, so and it runs through and we've had all walks of life through these doors and, you know, everybody says the same thing. And how it's sort of this cathartic mental health, um, nearly expression of how you're feeling. And, you know, so it is like another arm to your whole, you know, mental yeah. health, isn't yes. it really? So, of course, there are going to be ups when you're doing well and everything else. And then a long time ago, I learned not to listen to all the stuff going on around me because yes. if you were to listen to all the social media and stuff, everybody's doing great and you're just rubbish. But do you know, and I know that's not the crack no. at all. You know, no, I mean, no. everybody's just on the same bus, yeah, that's you know, right. and, and, they're, and they're trying to get to the same places. And yeah, you know, no, I, I completely can't yeah. with what you're saying there. And I think above all, you've got to keep... <clears throat> Keep keep jumping on the left to make it start again. And that's how it goes up instead of down. <laughs> right, Always that's moving a fantastic up. story. Um, you take it away and I, I'm going to enjoy this no end. Every window tells a story Every story needs someone Who's going to survive You're going to share in that glory once you found your way and you're on the inside You thought you had nothing But you'd studied your craft and you carry your trade Stitching all of those colors To fashion something only you could have made Take the elevator mind if it stops between floors all the greatest views are built on dreams like mine and yours meet me on the top floor I'll be waiting there for you meet me on the top floor I know you can make it too your feet Can you conquer this city Working all those shapes into your design You fasten flowers so pretty You're stealing all those hearts 
You're stealing mine, I always do You had something That cutting edge you'd never lose Like a diamond that glitters It's made of something that will always cut through Fantastic. I'm so glad you told me this story before that because that just came to life. It's a good old Molly Austin, eh? Yeah. With her dance yes, card yes, on her. Indeed. Getting stuck in the lift. She was a great woman. Fun. And she lived to 106. <clears throat> she did not. Yeah. In fact, she had beautiful hats too. She was when a she was fantastic woman, yeah. Yeah. So, so big like, thanks to Wendy Austin absolutely. for sharing, sharing her story. With absolutely. Me. And then the albums you have beside you then, so that's about different buildings then just yes. throughout Belfast. And I actually got. Um, I, I entered in for an award with the British Council right. and for their UK China Festival of Contemporary Art and 12 artists were chosen across the UK for the projects right. and I had put in the project that I would do videos of these three songs sure. from the project, one being Armagh Jail, the song I wrote about it which is called Sisters Born Here which I released as a single there, right. one being Belfast Angel yes. which is about the Art Deco Bank and the other one is about um, Austin's. So um, I decided to put, I recorded them up in um, Sonic Visual Studio up Slemish Sessions yes. and fantastic sound recording up there and with a live band, completely live. I've seen the video, so you had Johnny and all the lads. Yeah, and, um, all the lads sure that I would couldn't... do, do gigs with. Johnny does a lot of gigs with me all the time for years now. And we had Pete Wallace and Carl Harvey on bass and the fantastic Maddie Weir on drums. That would have been brilliant. So it was brilliant. Uh, brilliant. And the, um, it was videoed by Cormac Cocaine and Andrew Doherty doing the sound. So um, I just, when I heard what happened and I, I sent it off to this, the festival and they put it on their website but then it was for a festival period and I just thought you know what it'd be just lovely to make an EP out yeah. of these recordings legs so that's this. what I did yeah. and so many more buildings today if you want to go down there yeah we've done bridge. some fabulous buildings over yeah. the years so Fantastic. I would love to continue the work well will you leave that here for me and I can have I a will listen? of course <laughs> I will of course it's your gift <laughs> thank you so much it's mine only <laughs> totally um, it for where you. will people get to Bridget if they want to hook up want to get in touch well you know these days I mean there's always my website bridgetonneal.com but also um, I, I suppose I really keep a good a good profile up on Facebook that's where I connect with people okay. a lot of the time Instagram a bit as well right. but always Facebook Bridget O'Neill Music okay well we'll get that up on screen for you and thanks so much for this and thank you very much for coming in thank you it's a joy to talk to hasn't you hasn't it been uh, great good luck with all the rest of your work it's yeah, beautiful thanks, here thanks so much I have a whole team of fabulous ladies coming in over the next couple I of days imagine. so I'm really really looking forward to hearing the stories and the, and the shared sentiments between everybody yeah, but maybe you'll come back in sometime and, and, and do a, a part two for us I would love to thanks so much well, it's thank been a you very much. experience thank you radio well, that's it, folks, for us. Um, join us next time on Both Sides Now, where I'll have another fabulous lady on my sofa. <laughs> <laughs> little friend take it all away
Peace. The tension.